Um, so hopefully you've read the examples and attempted some of the questions. Um, so I'm going to go through two probability questions. Um, the first one, they've given you a couple of probabilities. Um, they've also given you a total here. Uh, so we're going to use that. It's going to be helpful. So we have a probability they joined both clubs. We have the probability of joining the music club. And um, from here, you might think, oh, should I add the probabilities inside the Venn diagram for part A, or should I add the numbers? Well, notice how they've added a number here. So we'll have to find the amounts first. So there are 20 students that did not join either club. So the 20 is included here. So remember, four Venn diagrams always start with the intersection. So the the ones that joined both clubs are a quarter. So a quarter of your total amount always goes to the total amount. There's no way you have a quarter human. So it's, a, it's an amount that you have to think about. So a quarter of 120 would give you 30. So there are 30 students that joined uh, both. And the probability they joined music is a third. So we're going to repeat the same thing. So this is going to give us 40, but keep in mind that 40 is all of music. From this 40, I've already included 30 of them in the intersection, which means I'm left with 10 here. Um, so now I don't have a probability for the sports, but I know that all of these should add up to 120. That's my total. So I'm going to go 120 minus 30 minus 10 minus 20, and that's going to give me 60. So that's going to be just the sports. So you get um, one mark for the 30 and the last mark for the 6 and 10 placed in the correct positions. Um, if you've done it incorrectly, your marks will follow through for the other parts, so don't worry. Now for part B, you could do it two ways. It tells you one of the students who joined the sports club is chosen at random. So we are already restricting our choices to the sports club. Um, so we... They've, they're already looking at the sports club, and from the sports club people, they're picking one person at random. So remember that probability is the probability of the event happening divided by the total possibilities. Your total possibilities is now only 90 people, not 120. Um, so from those 90 people, I want to know uh, what's the probability that I can pick a student who joined both clubs. Well, there are 30 students that joined both clubs. So the probability is that I have 30, pos 30 options that, that um, um, joined both clubs out of the 90 students, not the 120, because I'm restricted to the sports club. Um, so it has to be 30 divided by 90, which simplifies to a third. So that's the probability. Another way to think about this, if you want to, is that this is a conditional probability, except that they didn't write the word given, which is usually your keyword. If you want to use uh, conditional probability, continue to listen, um, continue listening to my explanation. If not, just skip through to part 1c. For conditional probability, I want the probability that they are in both, so S and M, given that they're already in the sports club. So as the formula goes, this has to be the intersection of these divided by the probability of S. And for Venn diagrams, I know that I can change the probability to the number of elements in the, well, intersection of sports and music and sports is just the intersection of sports and music divided by sports. And sports and music is 30, and the number of sports is 90. So that's another way of thinking about this question. Otherwise, just remember that because you are restricting to sports, you have to pick only the 90 people. Uh, and then determining if things are independent. Now, independent tells you that the probability, if two things are independent, so if they are, then the probability of S and M happening, so I'm just substituting the word and with intersection because we have a Venn diagram. So the probability of this happening is the same as taking the probability of S multiplied by the probability of M. So we want to test, are they actually equal? Um, and what independent tells you is that they don't affect each other. So if I pick sports, it doesn't affect the probability of picking music. Uh, there are some things that affect the probabilities of each other. But um, oh, I want to test, do these two? So the probability of uh, selecting music is 30 out of 120. So I want to test. So this is 30 out of the 120. That's the probability. The probability of picking sports is 90 out of 120. And the probability of picking music is 40 out of 120. 
So if I simplify both of these, the 30 out of 120 is going to give me um, 1 over 4. And the 90 out of 20, 120 times 40 out of 120 is also going to give me 1 over 4. So yes, they are independent. Okay, so this is the idea of independence. You, if you need to test whether two things are independent, find the intersection and find the probability of each one separately and multiply them. If they end up being equal, then yes, those two things are independent events. Again, what it means is that the probability of picking someone in sport does not influence the probability of picking someone in music. Um, a probability such as the second example where the probability of waking up late does affect the probability of coming work on time. And the probability of waking up late, the probability of coming on uh, time is going to be different. So um, this is where these two events are dependent on each other. So the probability of on time to work will depend on whether you woke up early or you woke up late. So these two will not be independent, for example. So for this question, again, I'm assuming you've read the question. Um, so I need to complete the Venn diagram. Well, I need to know when he wakes up early, what is the probability of being on time and late for work? Well, it tells me that if he wakes up early, the probability he's, he's on time is P. So I'll, I'm just going to write P. Yes, it feels like you need to write a number, but actually just write P in there because part B will ask you to find P. Now remember that a branch in total will always add up to 1 in terms of a probability. So this and this should add up to 1. And these are complement um, probabilities. So if I have a probability of event A happening, the probability of it not happening is 1 minus A. So this is the probability of A. The probability of not A happening is 1 minus the probability of A happening. So this is a complement probability, which means that if I'm on time to work, it's P. That if I'm late to work, it's 1 minus P. And P is a probability. And then the probability of coming to... Uh, if I wake up late, if he wakes up late, so this uh, we're in this branch now, and that he is on time, the probability is 1 over 4. And we use the same logic to know what what's going to be when he's late to work. So 1 minus 1 over 4 is going to be 3 over 4. So this is 3 over 4. So completing a tree diagram is quite easy, so do make sure that you guarantee the marks in there. Then it tells us that the probability he arrives on time for work is 3 over 5. Find the value of P. Uh, it won't be an easy question, it's a format question, so it's not too straightforward, but keep in mind, if it's on time to work, you're like, okay, which branches am I looking at? On time to work is here, but it's also here, which means I'm looking at two different routes. Remember, for probability, you need to consider all the possible routes um, on a tree diagram. So this could come from this route, and this could come from this route. So I have two options, and when you have two options, or when you have options in general, you always add them. Um, so I first need to find the probability of this and then the probability of this. Well, again, remember, if you want the probability of one uh, whole branch of a tree diagram, you have to multiply them. So I have 4 over 5 times p. This is the probability of being on time to work in here. And this will be 1 over 5 times 1 over 4. Um, and then once I found them, I need to add those two options. So I have 4 over 5 times p plus 1 over 5 times 1 over 4. And I know that the probability should be equal to 3 over 5. So it's just breaking down the question. If you've done any part of these, it would give you some, a mark somehow. So don't just stop at a question, just attempt it. This will simplify to, remember this is over 1, so uh, 4 times p is going to be 4p, 5 times 1 is going to be 5. 1 over 5 times 1 over 4 is 1 over 20. And then you solve it algebraically. I'm going to move this to the other side. So I'm going to have 4p over 5 is equal to 3 over 5 minus 1 over 20. Um, use your calculator for this. And you're going to get uh, 11 over 20. So now you have a fraction equal another fraction. So I can cross multiply. I have 4p times 20. So I have 8p is equal to 55, and now p is equal to 55 divided by 80, which simplifies to 11 
over 16. So that's your answer. And check your answer again. So try 4 over 5 times 11 over 16 plus 1 over 5 times 1 over 4, and it should give you 3 over 5.